In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer questions asked by people like you. So in this episode, we answered four questions. But the way we opened the episode was with current event talk. Uh, We talked about studies that we've read um, on Facebook or other media outlets. And we talk about our lives and stuff that's going on. So here's what we talked about in this episode. We start out by talking about Adam's holiday workouts or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. I was... uh, we were wondering why he was they looking. Don't exist. Why he don't look like a fitness guy anymore? It's because he's not working out. <laughs> then we talked about the bathroom remodeling that's happening uh, here at the Mind Pump headquarters, uh, and why and it's putting dust everywhere. We're covered it's in caked dust, in and here. I'm hoping that none of us get any terrible effects from it. I talked about a movie, a classic movie that I finally watched for the first time. Dirty Dancing. What a great movie. It was pretty good. <laughs> Where have you been? Yeah, we talked about uh, the holidays and all of the charged political conversations that happened for us. I'm sure you can so relate. So much fun. Um, I brought up the myth of easier, so why we think some things are easier, but in fact, they're much harder. That's why we call it a myth. I talked about terpenes. Terpenes are found in many, many plants. Um, they are what give plants uh, some plants their smell. Like pine, pine smell comes from a terpene. Um, the li- the citrus smell from lemons comes from a terpene called liminol. Um, and you can find these terpenes in the hemp plant and cannabis plant. And how I talked about how studies are showing that terpenes are part of the entourage effect. This is when you have cannabinoids in combination with terpenes and how that's far more effective than just taking isolated cannabinoids like CBD. Now, our favorite company uh, that has hemp oil is Ned. And the hemp oil that they make is full spectrum, meaning it has all the cannabinoids, including CBD. And and, all the terpenes. And all the terpenes. So that's why people write in and say that the results they get from Ned are far better than when they've used other uh, types of CBD products. Now, Ned is one of our sponsors. If you go to helloned.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then Adam brought up his protocol for preventing colds and flu. He's been using elderberry, zinc, and Organifi's immunity. Now, Organifi is a company that we work with. They produce organic uh, supplements, including green juice, red juice, which is good for energy. Uh, They have a gold juice for before bed. They have protein powders that are non-dairy, all organic. And, of course, they make the immunity that Adam talked about, which is supposed to help the body boost up its immunity so you don't get sick. Now, we have a massive discount for our listeners. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump, you'll get 20% off. Then we got into the fitness questions. The first question was, how can stairs be used to lift the glutes? So this person wants to know how they can use stairs to work out to get their butt to sit higher on their back. Hmm. The next question, this person wants to know, uh, look, if I'm already healthy and feeling good, How do I know if adding a greens supplement is doing me any benefit? So we talk about that. The next question, this person is a 19-year-old college student trying to save money, and they're struggling on whether or not it's worth buying organic or grass-fed. So we talk about the hierarchy of priorities Mm. that you should look at when you go and buy your groceries. Get a freezer. And eventually we did talk about organic, high-quality meats. We do work with a company that provides that uh, to people to their door, for phenomenal prices. It's Butcher Box. You've probably heard of them before. We have a huge discount, though. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, this month you're going to get two pounds of wild Alaskan salmon for free and $20 off your box and free shipping. Yeah. The final question was this person wants to know uh, how do you know if you're suffering from upper cross syndrome? So, upper cross syndrome is when your shoulders roll forward, your head juds forward. It's basically how everybody looks nowadays because we work on computers and we're always on our cell phones. So we talk about what it looks like. We talk about how to solve it and what some of the side effects are of having upper cross syndrome. Also, if you're listening to this episode when it's being released, right when it's being released, you are lucky because these are the final hours for the MAPS Aesthetic end of the year 50% off sale. Now, MAPS Aesthetic is a full workout program that was inspired by bikini competitors, bodybuilders, and physique competitors. So it's a program designed to dramatically impact and improve your visual aesthetics, how you look. Again, it's 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsblack.com and use the code BLACK50, B-L-A-C-K-5-0, 
no space for the discount. Dude, I've been terrible Fucking with my workouts great. this last week and a half. Oh my goodness! Your workouts have been terrible. Well, I mean, they've been non-existent right now. I was in, I was on such a well, roll. That makes sense. I was on. So, <laughs> it's it's like, piss off! I was like, it looks terrible. Yeah. Oh god, don't, don't do that! <laughs> don't do that! Good. I'm convinced that thing that we said about people only gaining like a, a, a pound or two over the holidays is a bunch of bullshit. I don't know what that. That's the average. Yeah, that's some bullshit right there. <laughs> I think if you, if, you know what they're averaging? Some people lose. They're, they're averaging the people that are starving yeah. in third world countries. Oh, that's terrible! <laughs> that's what they're they're averaging those people out with all the people that gain all the weight. And oh. they're like, oh, you'll only gain like one or two pounds because I'm like yeah. I don't know dude I don't work at so I miss like I don't know I think I'm on uh, realistically I think I've only missed about six or seven days straight which for me that's a lot like if I miss a whole week with not a single workout mm-hmm. that's a big deal mm-hmm. so I think I'm coming up on a week right now so you think that that, that it's like worldwide the average person gains one or two pounds over the holidays, but America's keeping that average up. Is yeah, that what you're saying? yeah. America, <laughs> it up America's high. pushing eight to twelve pounds, but because we got third world countries that are losing weight over the oh, holidays, that's terrible. it's averaged out. So that's terrible. I'm convinced that's what it is, dude. I, going a week without working out for me just feels. Forget the lack of fitness. I just don't. I, it's like my meditation. I need it. I yeah. need that. That, uh, that. Uh, I can find other things to replace that during the. Because here's the thing. Part of me too. I'm just not physical if I don't work out. There's nothing I do part other of, than working out that's physical. Part of me, I'm mm. I'm very aware too that we are borderline the other side, right? Like we can be neurotic about exercise. That's part of uh, we talk about that our insecurities drove it. So I'm very careful to uh, what I say to myself that why I have to work out like I'm healthy right you know what I'm saying I'm I know sure. I'm, I'm very so missing seven days of working out during the holidays to you know enjoy Christmas cookies and have drinks with my family and oh maybe soften up a bit um is that really like do I need it for meditation or am I pretty fucking relaxed and calm during these times well no what I mean by that is like uh, if I don't other than exercise I'm not active I yeah. don't have anything in my day that makes me no, active. No, well, I find that that's funny because if I'm not working out, like I'll find ways for me to go outside and like do things. Me like, too. Like I will go out and like actually, that's when I do most the physical labor. You know, I'm like chopping shit up. I'm like building something. Like I don't know, my body just feels like ah, I have to have to do I'm something. So dude. I'm good about that too, yeah. right? So if I if I like in this week, I haven't done that, but I've gone for hour plus walks where I put like a book in and I listen to it or take max or, you know, we played like three hours of ping pong yesterday. Like, so I'm, I'll still be moving, right? Like I can't, I, yeah, see, I don't move. Otherwise. Cause I get what you're saying. If yeah. I, if I actually just sat on a couch and just laid around that's and drank I mean, and dude. ate for two or three days straight, yeah. like, no, I that, can't do that, man. Yeah. That's like impossible. I can't just sit for that long. It just drives me crazy. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about. If I don't work out, I literally will not do any physical activity Yeah, and it just, Feels terrible. Look at Doug's trying to time the cleaning so he's not on the video camera. <laughs> fuck, wait, what? Sal? Wait, talks, who's talking? Yeah, right? Now? <laughs> we have fuck with him right now. <laughs> yeah. just, sneaky, Doug. Just fuck it, Doug. Well, you the, get on the, camera. The right. dust yeah. that came into this everything oh. from the bathrooms, and we have the doors closed. Yeah, but there's a, a fine. Can we know, say we're remodeling the bathrooms dude. right now? Yeah. Why? Why, can't, why wouldn't I don't we know. say? It? I mean, well, I mean, can we take happening. credit for it? I feel like we can take credit for it. I feel like we're going to pay for it, whether we like it or not. Yeah, exactly. Sure, it's our so, idea. But there's a there's a thin <laughs> layer of fine dust on everything from it, and dude, it, it makes you want sheet, sheet rock dust. Yes. it gets in everything. So you know, it's funny when I walk in, the smell reminds me of when I go to work with my dad because oh, it's that yeah. common construction kind of smell. Yeah. Now, do you guys ever wonder if I would love to see the statistics on construction workers and things like lung cancer? Do you guys think that they suffer more from those types of things, respiratory disease? I think that there are studies on that. Yeah, they have to be. Right? Look it up. Some ramifications yeah, yeah, yeah for that. no, look it up. I think I've I've seen that before. Yeah, because because you're breathing in this fine. You know, dust. You know what's supposed well, to be really bad is the uh, insulation and stuff like that, oh, right? Yeah. That's supposed to be really Asbestos? bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> now we've known that for a while. The old methods, yeah. <laughs> you gotta no, that's the- Condemn that's, your house. That's the gotta, popcorn ceiling stuff, but yeah, even no. just like regular insulation because of how thin and fine it is, I think that's really bad. So I got a question yeah. about asbestos. So you're saying the popcorn ceiling. So when we were kids, this a lot of- Because you don't see it anymore, right? The ceilings were that popcorn stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That itself was asbestos? Yeah. So when I was a kid and me and my cousin would we'd go on scrape it off and we'd fucking <laughs> yes. we'd make it snow <laughs> so in the room. Bad, dude. So bad. Was that what we were doing? So bad. We were giving ourselves yes. asbestos in our lungs? Yes. No way. That's like the worst you could do. Absolutely. Well, That's why you gotta be very careful. It, like it's long term exposure though. So it's not like, you know, yeah, a couple but if you're, time, but yeah, yeah, if you it's, breathe, it's, it's bad. It's long term exposure is long term exposure from its 
paste it on your fucking it's wall. There. If you're well, making you're it, living in if you're it, making it snow I mean, and yeah. making snow angels on your carpet floor, that can't be fucking. <laughs> That's good. what we did, dude. We we, we he, he had we had a bunk bed and we get on the top bunk and we'd stand on it and we go oh, no. with our hands and laugh. Ha ha ha. Yeah. And just make it snow everywhere. And you know, moms would be like, "Ah, oh, you make a mess." Oh, breathing like you smoked a cigar or something. Just- <laughs> You know what I'm saying? God. Oh it's man, terrible. yeah. Because I heard too, even like people that live near airports, like they're they're breathe like whatever's in the air is like so toxic. Like they're they're finding that from the jet fuel. Just, yeah, there's a certain proximity of like a mileage from. Yeah, it's it's the the dust uh, also from the freeways, but also yeah, the, the the jet fuel actually is like super toxic. Well, now now when you work around dust and stuff, don't they have like laws that require you to wear certain types of masks or whatever? I think so. Yeah, I think so, they're getting better. At that. So my dad grew up obviously doing this kind of work in Sicily. Nobody wore a mask. He's like a yeah. mask. What's that for? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. And then, yeah. And then when he got a little, when he got a little older, you, you know, he would just put on like a gardening. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, Dude, like that's supposed to help. Like I told you guys, like I seriously would go on these long vacations with my family, and we had this truck that, like, we would sit in the back with the with the cover over it, and it was right next to the to the gasoline tank, and we would breathe gasoline fumes. <laughs> For <laughs> no, hours, dude. Hell loved and, and I would like have headaches and shit, dude. I remember it vividly. It's like, oh man, it's just like I got a really bad headache. <laughs> My dad's like, I feel so bad for that. You know, is this one because you'd ride in the back of the truck? Yeah, you ride in the back. You're just just huffing fumes. That's back time. when nobody gave yeah. a shit about whether well, or not. Kids I was did. probably like high as hell too, just like walking yeah. out. Yeah. I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah. It's back when nobody cared if you wore a seatbelt. Oh, uh, they didn't know. Any, they they didn't know. No, you know, like. Nobody knew. No, I sat on my mom's lap in the front seat. Oh, really? Yeah. So my dad would, you know, go somewhere when I was little, and she'd just hold me in the front seat, which is the most <laughs> dangerous place for a baby. Yeah, she's gonna stop you. Yeah, but I would break her. You know, I would break her fall. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, she, you're the you're the buffer, bro. There. How miserable yeah. that be? You lose your kid and you survive. Oh, oh my god, dude. Yeah. The, the baby baby airbag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know baby airbags. <laughs> it's a new thing. Oh. Sal didn't make it, but his mom did. Terrible, oh. dude. I watched an old movie for the very first time uh, oh, a few, couple days ago. What's that? So Jessica has like always, always talks about Dirty Dancing. You guys know the movie Dirty Dancing? Yeah. Patrick Swayze. Have you never seen oh, it? Yeah. No, I've never seen it. You've That's never seen classic, Dirty dude. Dancing? No. So he, so here's the story. I thought I had seen Dirty Dancing. I thought I knew the movie. You I, watched the Kevin Bacon one, Footloose. No, right? no, no, no. Oh, no, okay, no. Okay. I love that. That's my, I actually love uh, Footloose. Everybody cut yeah. loose. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah no. So. She's like, oh, Dirty Dancing, one of my favorite movies when I was growing up. It's such a great movie, this and that. And I'm, she's like, dude, please watch it with me. Like, no, it's stupid. I don't want to watch it. I don't care, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, there's a show on Netflix called, uh, it's about move, the movies that oh, made, made us. Made the eight, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. So yeah. it's about old movies, uh, like right. classics, but it talks about all about how they were made and whatever. So one night we were hanging out and, you know, poor Jessica, every time we watch TV, I control what's on the TV. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to put on something that, I think she'll want to watch. So I said, let's watch this about the making of Dirty Dancing. Kind of interesting for me about one of her favorite movies. So as we're watching it, very interesting, I'm realizing I've never seen Dirty Dancing. Really? Yeah, I, I've seen enough clips of it to... To, to think you did? Yes. To <laughs> I think know, our I'm, memory is so like flawed. I've never seen yeah. it. I've seen... Pe- I've done that before too. I've seen pieces of it, you know? Yeah. like, And so I thought I watched it, but then as I'm watching the making of it, I'm I, I'm like oh what that happened that's the story she's like yeah that it's not just about dancing there's this and that and the other uh, I, I was raised by a woman and had two sisters so oh, I've yeah, watched you, it probably for it. thirty times oh, for sure man. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway it's a pretty good movie yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. did you guys practice the move right. afterwards no oh, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like that bro I can't waste. move like that Patrick Swayze's Take you dead, dude, man. He can Super move. Swell. He oh, actually yeah. really could, right? Yeah. He's he actually has. He, dan- he was he danced yeah. for years and uh, did it at a very high level before he became right. So he doesn't. That's not an extra. He's the one who's dancing. No. That, so right? the story goes that they when they were looking for actors to play the role, they loved his look, but on his uh, I don't know what's called resume or whatever for actors, it said uh, will not dance. So they that's didn't what it pick said on there? So they didn't pick him at first, but they loved the way Hilarious. he looked so much. So then they dug deeper because they couldn't find anybody, and they found that they found out that he had a, a very extensive dance background. But the reason why he didn't dance, he didn't want to dance as an actor, is because he played football in high school and busted his knee, and it just hurt his knee too much. So as an actor, he said, "I don't want to dance." 
And up until this point, he was in uh, The Outsiders. Great movie, by oh, the way. One of, my, movie. one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Uh, Red Dawn, another mm-hmm. great movie yeah, yeah, uh, with yeah. him. Um, which, by my the way, favorite was Roadhouse, by the way. Roadhouse. Yes, uh, I don't know if he did that so before badass. or after uh, uh, Dirty Dancing. Yeah, right yeah. around the same time. Around yeah. yeah. But apparently, Patrick Swayze was a badass. He was like a Texas boy, super intense. All uh, five, five of them? F- uh, five, ten. No. Yeah, he's 5'10". Yeah, he's is he really 5'10"? Yeah, he, he was. was short. Oh, I thought he was... No, I thought he was 5'5", five five is what I said. I thought no, he was five, really... Oh, five five you ten. thought he was really short. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you sure about that? 100%. Yeah, they he, said it in there? No, you know why? Because I was having this argument with Oh, yeah, because she's like, no, he's not. He's taller. You <laughs> no, said because he was taller. <laughs> you know, he's, a, he's a pretty fit dude. They're talking yeah. about him being You're like, yeah, intense. he's 5'4". Of course and I'm like, he's only 5'5". Five five, you know? <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, like, no, he's not. That's what I was like, yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, he played high school football. I'm like, but then again, yeah. this is probably back in the 70s, so you know, the standards weren't as high. Well, most <laughs> actors we found out are pretty short, so yeah. It's true. No, I didn't know he was, I actually thought he was, in fact, I thought he was one of those guys like, um, who's the other one that's super short and they shoot all his camera angles from the down Tom to up? Cruise? Tom Cruise, probably. Yeah, or, there's a, you know they do that for a lot of these guys, right? Yeah. They shoot it from down up on them, or they actually literally have, they have them, them stand on stuff. Yeah, stand on stuff when they're like talking to another, like a, a female character that's got four inches well, on them. Well, Tom Cruise, yeah. when he he was married to Nicole Kidman, mm-hmm. right? She's like way taller than him. She's she like three really inches taller, taller or whatever. Yeah. They were together. They were they were in that movie. Uh, what's that movie? Far and Away. Yeah, I knew you'd yeah. know that. Yeah, he's with her in uh, Days of Thunder. Too, By the right? way, in Far and Away, the one fighter that beat him was the Italian fighter, right? Oh, Justin? Get out of here! That? That Italian fighter <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> ah, give us another try. <laughs> <laughs> Put me in the ring. <laughs> uh, yeah. so hey, come funny. on, dude, Conor McGregor. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. your time. You know, man? every time he talks about it, reminds me of the Eddie Murphy stand-up where he does the oh, whole this, the Italian watches uh, Rocky. Yeah. Then thinks he's a badass instantly yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yeah. He gets like the yeah, Give me those juju beats yeah. right there, yeah. Mooley. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Starts bouncing a ball. Yeah. No, that was a great movie. Far and Away was a phenomenal movie. Oh, and yeah. Then, fantastic. Yeah. Movie. And then The Outsiders, I just said, I just mentioned that. When's the last time you guys watched that? Uh, it, I mean, we watched that in school because you re- read the book and everything and you mm-hmm. watch the movie, but I think I watched it later on too. It's just a good movie. Dude, overall. The out- The Outsiders had more. There was a lot of famous actors in there. Huge A-list actors. Yeah. Didn't that, a lot of them get their start that on Yes. That, right? Wait, but before they were all massive. Right, right. That's how they got their start. Yes. That one, Breakfast Club. There's a couple of like movies like that where there was a ton of Bro, like, big actors. Bro, I'm going to look up the actors in The, I know, in the I'm Outsiders because- I know. I'm trying to right now like, who is in there that uh, is memorable besides- Patrick Swayze. No, there was... Uh, here, I'll read them off to you. The the actors in there were insane. It was uh, Matt Dillon was That's in there. That's who it was, yes. Ralph Macchio was in there. Rob Lowe was in there. There was Patrick Swayze, Tom Cruise, all in the same movie. All before they became Tom Cruise. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Tom Cruise was. Um, oh, oh, Emilio Estevez. He was like a background character. Yeah, he was. Uh, and then I think Emilio Estevez was what, what was his name? Soda Pop. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Soda Pop was in there. Yeah. Anyway, Young Guns was one of my favorite movies with Emilio Estevez. I love that movie. That's oh, a that's good a movie, movie, isn't it? That's a great yeah. movie. That's a great. Yeah, he's movie. Billy the Kid in that. I now I thought that was historical when I was yeah. a kid. I thought that's actually what happened. Yeah, yeah. No, they, uh, yeah. No, they took some liberties with that one. Didn't they? <laughs> just, just, a, just <laughs> they combined a, all the old West, you know, dudes, just all, a, yeah, just hanging out together. You know. Anyway, Billy the Kid's an interesting story. Do you guys know much about him? Not a lot. Like just from uh, I know the Hollywood version, but yeah, I don't really know the the true background. Neither do I. I was hoping when you guys okay. (laughs) I was gonna say you got some knowledge (laughs) to throw because they have they have a a new documentary on him, but it uh, it got terrible reviews, so I didn't watch it. I actually was just clicking. I was going through this. You started me on it, Justin, because you brought up uh, Willow. Oh yeah, and I tried to convince Katrina, and so I went to that section of like. I forget what they call it, and and uh, it's like nostalgia, yeah, or, some, or, or out of the vault. Yeah, it was something of, like yeah. that where Willow was at, and I was going through other ones and Young Guns, and then I clicked on Young Guns, like oh, I want to watch this. Couldn't get Katrina convinced to watch Willow or Young Guns, and that led me to the, a new documentary that was on Billy the Kid, but the the reviews are terrible. Katrina, now you guys like this because Katrina gets mad at, or she gives me a hard time for this. Like, if something in, is rated. And it gets less than fifty percent. I will not watch it. Mm-hmm. Like, it, and she's like, "That is so weird that you do that. Why don't you make up your own mind and watch it?" I'm like, "Because ten thousand people looked at this. <laughs> you don't want to waste your time." <laughs> yeah, and more than half of them said it was terrible. So it's, why would- it's it's almost always right. Yes, I'm almost. I've never. It's very. You, it's, there's it's okay. Very the only accurate. time where it's yeah. wrong. Here's where it's wrong. Because. Mm-hmm. Because fucking Hollywood is so liberal, if there's a slightly conservative slighted movie that I might like or like super patriotic, or it challenges ideas. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Then, then it gets then it, it. Get, then it gets yeah. shit on a little bit. But that's, even then, it gets shit on like 
at 50, 60, it'll still get like 60%. Yeah. So if I kind of know what the theme of the movie is and I, and I know that, I'm like, okay, it's got a, it's going to have a little bit of a conservative slide to it, but it's probably a good movie and it got 60%. Like <laughs> it's, it's, like, pro- it's probably a lot better. Honey, let's watch America is Great. Uh-uh, yeah. it's got 47%. Like, uh, look at the title. America <laughs> yeah, is Great. Yeah, yeah, but look at that. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's why they said it wasn't good. Yeah. You know oh what I'm saying? God. Did you guys have exactly. any, over the holidays, did you guys have any like, um, like Arthur Brooks talked about, any like awkward political conversations or did it ever get because uh, with everything with the climate going right now i would think that you guys had something with one of your i family. had a hilarious uh conversation with my brother and like it was super super political but it was all about star wars <laughs> what, <laughs> what? <laughs> how's it political about star yeah wars? it was like i mean it wasn't political but it was like we pro were, pro was a pro empire and you know pro republic yeah pretty much i mean it, it was like we're talking about what was canon, what was not canon, like, oh. you know, the, the new movie series, like what what I liked about it, what I got entertained by it. And he's like trying to shit all over, like all of it. And I'm just like, what am I doing here? Why am I even talking about it? And he just was cornering me, you know, mm. and it was like bombarding <laughs> me. That's how funny your brother, you were <laughs> yeah. like that. But you know what's funny about it is like, I, and again, this kind of like took me back to why it was so like, I'm all about Star Wars was because when we were kids, like, we went to the Grand Canyon. We saw it for, for the first time when we were really little, and it had a huge impact on us. And I forgot that it had such a huge impact on my brother too. And he went like 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 if you talk if you think I'm a nerd, my brother is like 20 million times like the nerd Star Wars that I am. Like he he went all in on it, and and, and so it's like he's read all the accessory books, like all the different directions they've taken it, like all this stuff. And I forgot all that, and so I'm talking to him, and he's like, you know, like citing all these different authors that have taken it this way that Just way I'm, like, you. I'm like oh shit i'm getting like like killed oh but dude. at the same time like you know like it, it's it's pessimist versus optimist and, and that was like the the stalemate that we had because mm-hmm. we so it's now, interesting now do you guys share similar uh because you guys grew in the same household and i know you grew up kind of conservative do you guys share similar political views are you guys a uh, Posing like yeah, so that's uh, it's funny. He's a teacher, isn't he? Yeah, he's a teacher. So he's yeah, he's so you can guess what he is. Yeah, so he's different than me, uh, you know, politically, and so it's like that's that's the underlying thing. So is he he is he for is he for the empire or what? (laughs) Is is that what he is? He's he's for free stuff. (laughs) Oh no, no, no. no. (laughs) that's hilarious. Yeah, everybody gets a lightsaber. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) like no, let's let's not do that. You know, let's let's keep it in the Skywalker family. Yeah, like let's be let's be rational about this. Yeah, see, Uh, see, I'm the asshole who will who will argue against anyone. So my family. Care what position you have, I'm always going to find. See, I avoid you. The oppo- yeah, the opposing. Yeah, but actually, like, ah, I'm going to go do something outside. Yeah, as, as soon as I say the word "actually," everybody's like, "Ah, oh, their eyes roll." <laughs> Here he goes. Uh, he's going to tell you why you're wrong. Yeah. I shared. I shared that. Uh, oh my God, the the post or the message that uh, Justin Brink sent to us, Doctor Brink, with the that he sent to us. Oh yeah, uh, yeah that yeah, made me know. die yeah. laughing. Yeah, and funny. so I copied and pasted it, and I put it on my family thread. And if, and I rubbed like two of my family members the wrong way. Like, really? What what was bad about that? Th- just the, oh, it was just making fun of the like don't offend anybody. Yeah, yeah. That's all it was. Yeah, no, it was total. I thought it was completely fair play and funny. Like, mm-hmm. and here's the thing: it, it, why I brought this up because it's it's interesting that we're here at, at this time. And and you know, one of, one of my cousins uh, brought up like, oh, you know. Can we not talk about politics on on Christmas and everything? I'm like, there, it was a joke. First of all, you know, it wasn't like we were talking politics. It's not even a political. It's I know. There's nothing well, it is. Poli- it's a, it starts off with to my my Democrat neighbors, to my Republican oh, right. neighbors. So well, it's, well, I mean, but that's it's covering everybody though. It yeah, uh, yeah I know, but it's yeah. it, it, a little bit. It's a, here at the end of the day, it's funny, right? And what it reminds me of, and I thought about this today because I have a buddy of mine. Do you guys did you guys see the post that I did about uh, Dak Prescott, mm. the the he, the cologne? No. When you the 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 meme that I did. Oh, so it's it was making fun of Dak Prescott, which is the quarterback to the team that I'm a fan of. Mm. Ah. And I got roasted from one of my other best friends, who's a diehard Cowboys fan. He's like, "Why the fuck do you post stuff that's talking shit about the Cowboys?" Because I go, because it's funny. What's your team, dude. Right, right. It's yeah. like you have you're you're the worst fan ever. You're not you're not loyal. You know, something. I'm like, dude, why can't I? Why can't I still have fun and make fun of them too? Because I think it's hilarious. It's a yeah. it's a hilarious meme, and it's at my expense. Considering I'm a fan, so I get it, right? But I'm okay with that. Right. I feel the same way. The way people are like that with sports, they get the same way with politics. Mm-hmm. Like, 
And what I was giving totally. my cousin a hard time about is the answer is not shut it all down and don't have a conversation about it. It's be okay with it. It's okay. Like it's okay to to tease and have fun. Where it gets where it goes bad is when people get angry about it. When you get defensive and you and then you're you feel like you identify with one side or the other so much that you can't look at a meme or you can't look at a joke and laugh at it, you feel you need to defend it. Yeah. Mm. And that to me, that's and that's a problem today. Yeah, see for for me, because I, I try to stay as objective as possible and I can typically find something wrong with either side depending on the on the subject. <laughs> that people typically have a tough time guessing. And I've had this happen, guessing with what my position is. So there'll be there'll be a discussion going on and we'll talk about, you know, whatever and I'll I'll have my opinion and then they'll be like, "Yeah, Sal, so you voted for so and so, right?" And the other person, like, "No, no, no, he definitely voted for so and so." But actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're both wrong. Yeah. You know, <laughs> because they can't guess, but I have, I have there's I have family members that you don't want to bring up politics at all because they go it's too much. It's too intense. Yeah. Automatically, they turn into that's, that's really unfortunate. And you were the first person to tell me I didn't know this. Like uh, when you talked about how the the role of the jester, right, for mm. the for the kings and the importance of that. And I think about that today. Like, and then that probably evolved into you know uh, political cartoons, which then probably evol evolved into like stand up comedians. Mm. And you know, and then we like we talked about what Bill Burr was talking about, and you could almost feel that the the climate's going to shift and change by what the comedians are talking mm -hmm. about because yeah. it's gotten so ridiculous that there's irony and comedy in it that mm -hmm. you're hearing it now and i think there's i think that plays a huge role in keeping the balance this balancing uh, the scales out it releases the pressure yeah it, it takes a little bit out of it and uh, it's so needed cuz yeah if you can't if you can't like challenge your own ideas and kind of make fun of it and right. see it from other angles then you know it's really not that valid like you're just you're just too emotionally driven and you're too attached to that and, and you need you need to be challenged i think i think laughter exists for that exact reason yeah. evolutionarily speaking i think it exists it specifically exists to break tension. Yeah. Yeah. I was really disappointed in my family. The two that, I mean, the thread has like 10 or 11 of us, 10, I think 10 of us on it. And you know, two of them were, you know, sour about it. Oh, it's not. I'm like, come on. First of all, it's not a big political discussion. It was a funny <laughs> post that I shared with you guys. Everybody else thought it was hilarious. You felt the need to get all sensitive about it. Yeah. And I just think that's really funny. And, 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 and I don't think that's the answer. The answer is not, don't say anything. Let's let's be so that she was making a point of, you know, we should maybe we should just be open to more people's opinions and, and views on things and be more tolerant. I'm like, OK, that's fine. I'm not saying you can't be tolerant to it, but you can't also you can also laugh at it. You can laugh at yourself. You can laugh at either side. And yeah. I, I just think it's an, uh, it's an unhealthy relationship with politics to ignore them so hard that you have to try and shut them down. It's like, you know, you can either choose not to contribute to it. Uh, and but to get offended by it, like to identify. Also, with also it. get this: you're not gonna like everything about everyone. I, I, even the people that you like a lot, you're not gonna like everything about them. Yeah. It's okay to not like certain things, right? But then also realize that that doesn't mean you hate the person. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah, we had a we had a, a big discussion uh, over the holidays over what I would call the myth of easier. So we were talking about. I was talking to a family member, and they were talking about how much easier it is to not worry about the nutrition that you have, you know, not worry about the food that you put in your mouth, how, it's, how much easier it is to not go to the gym or schedule time for exercise, how it's just easier to just kind of coast um, and not worry about those things. And the argument that I made was that that's a myth. It's actually a myth that those things are easier because – it's actually much harder to be yeah, I unhealthy. Just, I was going to say it's it's. I wouldn't think it's easier. Well, that's the thing. I think people, because it requires structure and discipline, they equate that to to, to it's harder. But the reality is, uh, good health and the discipline that goes into it is easier yeah. than the consequences of bad health. You know, being in poor health, obese, you know, diabetes. Chronic I, think, pain. I think what gives what I would have contributed to that conversation is that I think what contributes to that is how distracted we are today. Therefore, it feels like it's you know easy to just not do it because you're distracted with other things. Where 
you know, 50, 60 years ago, you would just be sitting there being doing nothing, right? Where we can easily like, pick up a phone yeah. or watch a stream a movie or do something to distract us and not make us f- think about things, right? Mm-hmm. Think about my current health state. Think about what I'm not doing because I'm always doing something now because we got so much. It's so easy. Well, think, to be- well, think Avoiding about- things always seems easier and then it keeps stacking up on you. And when you realize you just had to address it and you could have like tackled that thing before it got bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, you know, it would have been way easier for you to do Well, think about this way, right? Like in order to become uh, financially secure and let's say successful, that requires, you know, study, discipline, hard work, uh, you know, showing up every day, performing well. And yes, that's all hard work. That's all requires lots of discipline. But how much harder is it to have zero financial stability or to be in poverty, Mm -hmm. you know, for lack of doing those types of things? See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I call it the myth of easier the reality is the the road that you think the, the road towards better health and all that stuff may look like it's more difficult because it requires discipline and structure but the reality is that's the easy road the hard road i mean poor health is hard super hard it's tough it's way more expensive it's like when people tell me oh it's expensive to eat healthy it's actually cheap to eat healthy when you compare the the, the savings in terms of productivity and your health and type of stuff. So, Oh, I think there's lots of examples of that within fitness too. Like I think about the, you know, ignoring all the mobility work uh, and corrective work and stretching I should have been doing for years. Okay. It was really easy to ignore it and not think about it, but look at what, it, what, look how much work I had to put in to correct a lot of that bullshit. It then took all this hardcore dedication to get back to a place where I could squat really deep. I didn't have bursitis in my hips. My low back pain was gone. But what's great now and what I've made sure of is that maintaining that is actually really easy. As long as I make sure I do a few things every single week that keep me uh, mobile and in that uh, capable to do that position, I, I should never lose it where you know, I ignored it for so long that when I finally did address it, it became this huge daunting task. Well, part of the challenge is when when people are, and they've done studies on this, when they give people the option of like, uh, you know, how, where do you, how far do you think you'll be in five years or 10 years? We tend to be overly optimistic the further the dates go out. So like, you know, do you think you'll be at this position in 10 years? And people are like, definitely, yes. You say something like next week, people are much more pessimistic. So when we're when we're doing that in our minds in terms of like, okay, I got to make it to the gym three days a week. I got to eat healthy or whatever. That's all immediate. And so we think to ourselves, I'll be fine in five years. I'll take care of it much later on. But the reality is it's it's much more difficult. It's a, it's much – the truth is the easier path is the one that is means that you have discipline and you're doing the things that are contributing to positive health and to positive changes in your life. It's far more difficult – to not do, do those things, it, it, even though it feels immediately it's like it's easier, like, oh, I get to relax and not you know, work out or I don't need to worry about my nutrition and just eat whatever I want. The reality is that's the more difficult uh, and challenging path. And so that's why I think if you look at what you want, what do I want? I want good health. I want you know, stable family. I want good financial security. Think of all the things you need to do to get there and then think to yourself, oh, that's real hard. But wait a minute. Let me weigh it against the opposing side. Poor health, poor financial stability. What does that look like? Okay, now I can see which one the easier choice is. You see what I'm saying? Was this a conversation with your family or uh, Jessica's family? No, it was one of my one of my cousins. We were just talking oh, so about it was this. Your yeah, family. and we were just talking about how, and they agreed. Once I was able to, you know, explain myself, they agreed because they were trying to say how much e- how how much hard work it takes to uh, maintain uh, health and fitness. And I said, no, I think it, discipline, yes, and consistency, yes. I said, but it's actually easy. In comparison to the alternative, and then you know, I made my argument. I, I think, think I think uh, maintaining like a, a healthy weight and eating healthy and being healthy that is like relatively easy. I think trying to do things like shaping the body or you know performance gains, things like that, is what that takes. Well, you a, could take it even further, sure. Right, like that. Take, but to just have good balance, mm-hmm. I, I think that we've overcomplicated it. Mm-hmm. I think we. I think people think. I remember my buddies when I first was really getting into fitness, and they'd always ask me like. You know, what are you going to do when you get older? Is this going to be like a lifelong, like you can't do this when you're in your 40s and you're 50s, 50 years old, yeah. like yep. spend two hours in the gym every day. Who's going to do that? I'm like, two hours in the gym every day? You fucking nuts. Yeah. Like, I don't do that why? now. Like, why yeah. would I do that? Like, I think people think that in order to have this physique that you have to, 
be in the gym for hours and hours and hours and make crazy amounts of sacrifice. I think it's just having a better balance. And more importantly, I think it's more so just being very self-aware <clears throat> when you when you want to go down this this you know rabbit hole of bad eating and being lazy and not moving like that can that can compound really fast and i think that's what happens to a lot of people is and they stay distracted they don't pay attention to the slippery slope of not moving all day long drinking eating bad that one day two day before you know it three four weeks in a row of over consuming 500 to a thousand calories and not exercising well yeah fuck that's you are going to do some damage but if you make a conscious effort that to try and get in the gym two to three times a week when you're not in the gym be aware mm -hmm. that you you're not moving as much you're not training so probably reduce your caloric intake a little bit when you do eat try and target the things that are most nutritious for your body you know there's some really basic rules that if most people were to follow them would stay relatively healthy they, with very little effort they would they would that's what we're trying to do right we're trying to tell, teach people kind of how to do that um, I was also reading about the you guys have heard me talk about the um, entourage effect Mm -hmm. You know, as in regards to cannabinoids and how they work better together, mm -hmm. I haven't explained the full, uh, really the, the the gist of the entire thing because I've only referred to cannabinoids. But the entourage effect in studies also refers to the other things that come along with cannabinoids from the cannabis or hemp plant. Um, in in, in uh, specifically, they're talking about cannabinoids and terpenes and terpenoids. So do you, get, do you know what terpenes are? I've never heard of terpenoids, but I've heard of terpenes. So terpenes are what give uh, the plants flavor and smell. the smell and yeah. the flavor. And they don't just exist in um, in cannabis and hemp uh, plants. They also exist in other plants. Regular flowers. Yeah, flowers or, you know, like, like uh, you know, there's... Um, I, like pi I think linalol. This linalol, is what, linalol, this is what they use for like all your like your oils and your smell good stuff that you plug into the wall. And yeah, like, like okay, so, and so like stuff. pinene. Pinene mm -hmm. is a it gives you a pine aroma. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a terpene. Um, there's uh, myrcene is another one. There's there's tons of them that they've had. Limonene. That's the one that gives it like a. Citrusy. What's interesting to me about where you're going right now is that so I've known about that for a long time, but we're we're starting to find out more and more information about how those play a, like role too. They, they do other they play, than just the smell and the flavor. No, they play a big role. Right. So they're finding that that the terpenes are m one of the main reasons why some strains of cannabis will make you feel, even though the the THC and the CBD and other cannabinoids are similar, mm -hmm. why one may make you feel one way and the other one may make you feel a different way. Mm -hmm. Even though the cannabinoids are almost the same, wow. it's the terpene differences. It's why some smell- so the different combos you can actually put in a formula that has a different effect? It's Yes, and it's not just, it's just the it's the the the, the whole package. Uh -huh. So if you have like a, a strain of cannabis that smells like a you know skunk or whatever, it's the combination of the terpenes that give it that smell plus the- cannabinoids that are in there and other things that that's what they call the entourage effect. So, you know, when you, you know, like, like we work with Ned, right? You ever open the bottle and smell yeah. the Ned? It smells like yeah. it's from a plant. It's, yeah. you could smell that because they keep the whole, the whole plant extract is in there. They don't take anything out. So it's not like some, uh, companies will produce like CBD oils or other cannabinoid type supplements. But either A, it's just CBD, or B, it's just cannabinoids that are put in the, in the oil. And then it's it, devoid of a lot of that uh, smell. Yeah, it's devoid of all of the other things that make up the entourage effect. So I was just reading an article on terpenes themselves, and new studies are coming out showing just how important they are. And they've identified that the terpenes contribute to anti-inflammatory properties. Oh, interesting. Pain relief, antibacterial properties, antifungal properties. Some of them ha uh, assist with muscle spasms. Others may help with depression, anxiety, insomnia, and even stress. So I think it's far more complex. Do you think because it, it works kind of like a, like a regulator for so many things, right? Do you think that this will become something that gets, we figure out like what, a, what an ideal RDA is per person and that it becomes like put in multivitamins. It's just like, a, oh, you should take your you know, 20, 240 milligrams of CBD every single day. And that's kind of, I don't help. think it'll go that far. I don't think there's an, or I don't think there should be a rec, you know, like a recommended daily allowance. I think it'll still be used on a, you know, like as needed type of basis yeah. um, as a way to, I don't know if I necessarily believe that. maybe some people should take it every day. Um, but I think it's going to be more uh, probably advertised and used more as a, as needed basis. Like, Oh, I'm, 
I'm anxious or, you know, I'm not feeling too good or I'm sore or whatever um, or inflamed, then I'll take this, you know, this, this product or whatever. Well, but the entourage effect, it, the studies are clear <laughs> that in, if you look this up yourself, look up the uh, entourage effect with cannabinoids and terpenes, and you'll see what the studies show far, far more efficacious than uh, isolated uh, cannabinoids. Well, since we're breaking down science and we're doing commercials right now uh, for Organifi's commercial today, I actually had a, a question for you in regards to uh, their Im immunity boost. So I know that you've, you've told me before, like the ideal thing for me to do, like when I feel like a cold coming. So I felt like my, my throat was kind of mm. sore, was like kicking up. And the first thing I did was... Uh, go do the immune boost. And then the other thing that you always tell me to do is the elderberry, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They say that right this mm -hmm. time. I know, I fuck it up all the time. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you always perfect. say ed edelberry. I know. Uh, so the elderberry and that. And I couldn't find that. But then when I was I was reading the back of uh, uh, the immune boost from Organifi, and it actually has zinc in there already. And sure. isn't that what I'm searching for when I take the elderberry? No, 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 no. No, they combo that in the throat lozenges. No, like right. That's that. what I thought. Yeah, that, but yeah, you can that's get not it by the main. Itself. That's not the main thing that I'm. No. So elderberry itself um, has. Uh, oh, so it's not the zinc. I thought it was the zinc that was in the elderberry that was. Zinc so is another thing. Now, zinc does not come in elderberry. <clears throat> elderberry is a fruit uh, that doesn't. It doesn't contain any zinc. Wait, what? You, the the sambuca ones that ha are, have. Those are those are lozenges, and they put zinc yeah, they, and they, elderberry together right so okay so i was confused i was under the impression that the because when i look at the back of the the sambuca or whatever it is uh, elderberry the majority of it, of it is the zinc and they, so i thought the zinc was what the main benefit i was getting both so elderberry okay. itself uh is antiviral so it's actually one of the few natural things <laughs> that actually has, works yeah actually yeah. has clinical study to show that it reduces the severity and duration of influenza which is a, obviously you guys know the flu is a terrible uh, nasty virus. So elderberries um, quite effective against it in, in comparison to other natural remedies. Um, zinc is uh, in studies has been shown to prevent uh, viral loads from increasing, um, in particular the rhinovirus, the cold. Mm -hmm. So zinc is good for when you have a cold. High levels of vitamin C is mixed. There are some studies that show that it helps, other studies that show that it doesn't do anything. Anecdotally speaking, um, you know, I I seem to do well when I when I'm getting a cold to take high doses of I feel the same of vitamin too. C. Low levels of vitamin D probably uh, definitely will reduce your immune system's ability to fight off infection. So they'll have some vitamin D in there as well. As I was gonna say, their immune boost has got a, a, all those things in it. It's got all that stuff. Yeah, in the there. only thing I don't think it, it doesn't it, have it, the elderberry. Though, doesn't have it. elderberry. In it. So I should take the elderberry with that immune boost, and that's like the. Anything else I should add to it? I, I mean, it's cold season off. right now, so yeah. I figured people would get a lot of value from this. This was something that hit me just recently, and I was like scrambling in my house to make sure I put it together. And I'm fine. Like I did, totally didn't get anything, uh, even though I felt like something was coming mm -hmm. on. Um, and it's because I do that because I, I doubled up on the immune boost. I took two of them in then one day, and then I ended up tracking down uh, um, the Zeke lozenges. But then I looked at the back of the label, and I was like, oh, that's already in here. Yeah, yeah. So I don't need to take the Zeke lozenges. All I need to take is the immune, and then and then elderberry has its its own value. Yeah, you could buy elderberry by itself. You could oh, buy okay. either in syrup form or or like gummies or whatever, and it's just all by itself with no zinc in it. Oh, okay. I have mm -hmm. bought the gummies before. Yeah, a good a good strategy. This is just my own. So I, this is uh, this is me combining what I've seen in, in certain studies um, and putting them together. So this is I didn't read any studies on this particular uh, protocol, but this is what I've done. Is where I'll do. Uh, I'll do the immune boost just because that has the immunity from uh, Organifi because it just has everything in there. Elderberry and sauna. And then make sure I get a good night's sleep. And lots of water. Yeah, lots of water. But yeah, sauna yeah. is good too because the sauna raises your internal you know, core temperature, mm -hmm. kind of simulates a fever. It's like an artificial fever. And that stimulates uh, <laughs> in your immune system to put out more, you know, uh, basically boost the levels of, uh, of, of compounds in your own natural body that fight uh, infections and viruses. Oh, interesting. I'll have to and do I that. don't recommend doing it when you're already sick. I don't think it's right. a good idea to go in there when you have a fever. Right, right. <laughs> that might be, no, it's like it might you, not last very long. You know, worst no. idea it's ever. trying to catch you. Right, right. you. I tell you, when I'm good about it, like yeah. you have that, because everybody, not everybody, but most time you feel this like little scratch right. in the back of your throat or notice a sneeze or a sniffle early. And if you're really good about it, and I've noticed this, if I get on it and I do those things, yeah. Sometimes one, I won't even get it. Or what I've noticed is if I do still get sick, it's way quicker. Like I'm over it a lot faster. Than Here's another thing too that you might want to uh, consider is a lot of times people will get a, uh, a sinus infection or a secondary infection after having a cold. So they'll get a cold 
And then because of cold causes you to get inge- you know get congestion and buildup of mucus that then the cold goes away, but because the cold caused that buildup, then they'll get a secondary sinus infection. So it's like, I had a cold, cold kind of went away, boom, now I have a, a sinus yeah, infection. The, yeah, remnants. Yeah, so uh, Sudafed and Mucinex, those are, those are pharmaceuticals, but Sudafed and Mucinex might help prevent that because they clear out all the mucus and prevent you from producing a lot of it so that you don't get those secondary uh, you know, type infections. So that's another thing that I've, uh, that I've done. That's my own, by the way, my own protocol. Don't, don't, there's no scientific so I said it, that. I'm doing it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Ambassador Health. <laughs> First question is from Gimme Cashews. How can stairs be used to lift the glutes for someone who lives in a multi-level setting? I thought this was a funny question. That to would, lift the glutes? Lift? Yeah. Uh, so obviously trying to work her butt. And I think w- the reason why I picked this question is because uh, how often do you guys see people on like the stairmaster, and then they do that like like flutter glute, kick yes, behind them, the, the yeah. glute kick behind them, and and a lot of them do it because the because it works the glutes right. And when you when you take big steps like that, uh, you know the butt's being stretched out. You are stepping up your body weight, so there is some glute work that's happening. Um, but I think that there, I know a lot of people that that's their glute work is doing the stair masters. That's their theory is, you know, oh, I want to work my butt. So I do the stair master every day for my cardio. And I just wanted to have answer this question because I think this is, this is a type of question that is from people that believe this. And I think that's something that we haven't talked about in a long time and should dispel it, that. It, it, it'll build your, you know, doing high reps, cardio, stair master, walking upstairs, <clears throat> It'll build your glutes more than nothing will, okay? So in comparison to being sedentary, you'll build a little bit of glutes. In comparison to resistance training, though, it's it's there's no comparison. It's nil. Yeah. And, and you also got to think if you're doing cardio or you're burning extra calories and, you're, and if you're trying to diet at the same time, the likelihood that you're going to get much or any growth at all in the butt is very, it's very unlikely yeah. because you got to also remember too, and I think this is a mistake that people make when talking about the butt, very common that I get a client, especially my female clients that want to lose body fat, but they also want to build their butt and build muscle essentially. Exactly. And that's the point I'm making is that, you know, those are conflicting goals and it's better to focus on one or the other at a time. You're going to get a lot more results that way than thinking that, oh, I'm going to build my butt while I also lose this body fat. You're in a caloric deficit. Your body is catabolic, meaning that we're breaking down. And so to be breaking down by being in a low calorie and doing exercise and expecting your butt to grow, especially doing things that are definitely the on the very probably bottom of the list of things that help the butt grow, just highly unlikely. Yeah, it's, it's too many reps too. It's just too many reps. You're, you're going to build stamina. You're going to build endurance in the glutes, but you're not going to build much muscle. So you may be wondering, well, why would building stamina and endurance in a muscle not contribute to a lot of uh, muscle gain or shape or size. Um, now, first off, when we're comparing it to doing nothing, you will get a little bit of muscle and in, in, in shape and size in comparison to being totally sedentary, a little bit. But when you're comparing it to resistance training where you're training for eight reps or 12 reps and using heavy weight, it doesn't even come close. And here's why. High repetition, stamina, endurance means that your muscles need to be as efficient as possible. They need to be able to move over and over and over again for high repetitions without burning a lot of energy. Um, That means the muscles can't be too big. They can't be too big. They need to be smaller. Um, And because the high repetition type activity doesn't require a lot of force generation, you're not, you're not, you know, when you're climbing stairs, it's not like every stair is like, it's not like you have like, you're carrying someone. You need a lot of recruitment there. Yeah. So it's just, it's just low level uh, muscle contractions mm-hmm. that are done frequently in a lot, and you just need I want efficient. To, it's like getting a small engine for your car. You need something that's efficient. I want to put it in a perspective for someone too that that does this because I know this happens. Okay, uh, you could do the stairmaster five days a week uh, for an hour at a time in pursuit of hoping it's going to build your butt, and you could put that up head to head against somebody who squats twice a week for four sets of 10 reps of a weight that's- Which is like 30 minutes, not 20 even, minutes. Right, yeah. Four sets of 10 reps. You could get that done in 15 minutes, Probably, yeah. right? Doing that just twice a week, 
you'll build way more ass doing that than you ever will on a Stairmaster for hours. Plus, you're taking it through the full range of motion, you know, that way, which you're just never going to get that type of range of motion doing the stairs. Yeah. No, look, okay, here's how you can use your stairs to build your butt if you want to maximize that. I would say take, uh, first of all, skip steps. So go up every other step so you have a d deeper range of motion. Hold some weight, maybe put on a heavy backpack, or just do real controlled slow reps. And do maybe 10 steps for each leg, so 20 total steps, just right about there. And, and keep the intensity high, meaning if you did that and it's easy, maybe hold on to some weight, put on a backpack, something that give, gives you some resistance so you can stip, skip each step and get that full range of motion, come up, take the next step, come up. After you've done your 20 total steps, rest for about 45 seconds to a minute and a half, then go back down the stairs and then do it again and do like five maybe six sets of that. Treat it as resistance training. Treat it as lifting weights. Not cardio. Not cardio. Not the, you know, not, not, you're not doing a hundred steps up and down every single, which there's nothing wrong with that. You're going to get some fitness from it. You'll get some endurance and some right. stamina. But when it comes to building muscle, it's not going to do much. Yeah, I would just hold weights and step up on a box. Mm. You know, like mm -hmm. you're much more effective. Yeah, but it's funny how, you, how quickly your body adapts to this. You know, I have family that lives in, in, in Sicily and a lot of the way the houses work over there is you live on a, like on a floor. So they'll have a building and each floor is a different, you know, is like one or two different apartments or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'd have ants who are in their seventies who live like four or five stories up and, and they're every day. Yeah. They climb up the stairs every yeah. single day. They, they go grocery shopping every single every day. They go grocery shopping yeah. every day. They go out and do something else and they'll climb up these stairs and they're not out of breath or whatever. And they're not buffed and muscular and all that stuff, obviously fit and healthy, um, so it's, it's not bad for you. It's just, it ain't going to be a great muscle builder of the glutes unless you add resistance and treat it like you're doing, like you're lifting weights. Next question is from Kai M. McClure. If someone is already healthy and feels good, how can you tell that the addition of a green supplement is working? Well, it depends on what you mean by feels good, right? And, and like, there's a, there's a lot of different things that might make somebody feel good. Like feeling good is what you have good energy. Cause that's definitely an indicator, right? So energy level, sleep, uh, stamina, skin, hair, stool, you know, all these things, uh, you know, are, you get benefits from getting enough, you know, uh, vitamins and nutrients on, on a regular basis. And so if you are hitting it out the park on all those things, and you know that you're getting, uh, several servings of greens every day, it's not something you're probably going to benefit that much mm -hmm. from, but that's really rare that I have somebody who's kind of hitting it out the park on all those line items. There's normally somewhere that someone's missing. And for me with clients, uh, the, the biggest indicator of not getting enough greens, uh, and fiber is, is normally from clients that notice it from their stool. So stool is normally the first place uh, that I notice that is off. They're just they're either not shitting regular, or when they do shit, it's constipation or it's not consistent. And those people are you, sh you shouldn't struggle. That's yeah. that's the big one. You should not struggle when you go to the bathroom. It's funny when I say that to when I've said that in the past to clients. I've gotten the weirdest looks yeah. because people yeah. think that you're supposed to. Yeah, <laughs> you, you gotta fight it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, people literally. What do you mean you're not supposed to struggle? That's how you poop, right? You sit on the toilet and you like you gotta yeah, kind of push yeah, it yeah. out. Ugh. It's like no, no, no. That's not. You, you, yeah. It should. It should be okay. Like you should. You should just plop. You out. Feel really nice. Yeah, yeah you shouldn't feel like you shouldn't feel like you're going yeah. you're going to war or yeah. whatever every time you go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know. But no, here's the thing with with certain supplements. Okay, some supplements. You gauge them by their acute effects. So, like uh, uh, caffeine is an example. You take caffeine, thirty to sixty minutes, you feel it. If you feel nothing, maybe what you're taking doesn't have any caffeine in it, and you're bought something that's you know that's bunk or whatever. Other supplements, they're not. You're not going to necessarily uh, notice an acute effect. It's more cumulative over time. Now that may be difficult for you to identify. You know, okay, I've been taking this green supplement for, you know, two months. And uh, I, I think I, I feel good, but I don't know if it's the green. Here's how you know. Stop taking it. Yeah. So take it for you know 30 to 60 days. You could do like Organifi, their, their green juice is a good example. Take that for 30 to 60 days. Take it every day, you know, one serving or whatever, every other day. Um, everything feels good. You know, you, you, everything seems okay. Then stop cold turkey and see if you notice any differences. And I've done that with certain supplements where I'm like, is this really making me, you know, feel any better? And then I'll stop totally and be like, oh yeah, I was 
getting some benefit and from to this. the point that it accumulates the same thing will happen when you cut cold turkey so if you cut cold turkey the next day you're not going to all of a sudden oh wow my stool's way off oh wow i don't have mm-hmm. energy pay attention over the course of the next week or two of not having it because it's going to take some time for you mm-hmm. to not be getting those nutrients before you probably start to see it being expressed through the body whether it be through energy or stool yeah. which are the two the energy and stool are the probably the top two Although it skin, can't, skin is a big one. I was going to say skin, skin and hair mm. also, but I think the easiest for people to measure, unless you have skin issues like I do, like when I'm when I'm out of balance. Yeah, that's your main signal. Yeah, like for me because I have psoriasis. Like man, when I fall off my vitamin D like supplement, it is very obvious to me. It's not even a question, and it does. It takes a, about a week or so of falling off of it and not taking it consistently. Then all of a sudden, my my psoriasis is is mm. nasty. If you have pretty good skin already, skin might not be the best indicator. So it really just depends on 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 the person on how it will express itself. But like Sal said, I mean, you 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 be consistent with it for a while. And this is like with, I, I, this is how I teach people to do anything, right? Anything that you're doing, even things like cardio and exercise, like you know, do something consistently. Pay attention and then stop doing it and be consistent with not doing it for a while and, and pay attention to the difference. That's how you measure and decide if something is, is doing So doing So here's how I use supplements like uh, excuse, like, a, like a green supplement. I, the way I use green supplements is I'll, I'll take them, and if I feel really good taking them, then it means I'm not eating enough vegetables. That's how I use it. So yeah. it's like if, if I take them and I notice nothing – then uh, that means that my vegetable intake is pretty good. Well, and like, well I, traveling is a big revealer of that for me a lot of times because that's when that's like when you, vegetable you really have down. to seek yeah, yeah vegetables. Uh, you know when you're eating out all the time, and uh, then you totally notice that if you do pay attention to your stools, you know, and it's not coming out like you know one of those like play doh sausage making machines, you know, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Next question is from Chandler Dessenberger. As a 19-year-old college student who is trying to save money, I'm struggling with whether it's worth it to buy organic grass-fed groceries. There's a hierarchy of uh, things you should prioritize when you're buying food. Um, number one, you want to you want to look at your total calories and your macros. So those are the top most important things. So try to hit your caloric intake and try to hit your macronutrient intake goals, proteins, fats, carbohydrates. The second thing I would say is to avoid heavily processed foods. Now, it's not because heavily processed foods are inherently bad, although for the most case, heavily processed foods tend to be less healthy for you than whole natural foods. But the reason why I'm telling you to avoid them is because they make you overeat. This is unequivocal. This is 100% proven. If you eat uh, heavily processed foods, you're just going to eat. You're going to want to eat more food or you will eat more food. And that right there, you know, combats the most important thing I just said, which was calories and macros. So if you handle those th- those three things right there, calories, macros, avoid heavily processed foods, you are doing pretty damn good. Then I would go, next I would go to organic and food quality and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but you got to tackle those first things first because what you don't want to do is what I've had clients do where they're like, you know, they want to lose 40 pounds and, but, and they tell me, but Sal, I eat organic, everything. And everything, all the meat I eat is grass fed. And I look at their their diet, and I'm like, well, okay, you're, yeah, you're eating organic, you know, cheese puffs, and you're eating, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're, right. you're you're having you know grass fed cheeseburgers, you know, twice a day. Your calories are too high. You're going to suffer from negative health effects from that, regardless of how organic uh, or grass fed it is. Somebody uh, posted a not only a hierarchy of what you just listed, but also a hierarchy of organic foods. For example, oh, yeah, yeah. if it's like an avocado, which has got a thick skin that you mm. don't eat. Or a banana. Right, yeah. or a banana. It's less It's less important because you're not getting a bunch of shit sprayed on. Mm. Where like a strawberry or blueberries or a berry where you're going to eat the skin and everything. It's all open and exposed. Yeah, yeah. and I, 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 I got to find who had... I thought it was maybe Max or somebody who posted this post, but I'd seen it and I thought that was really valuable to somebody asking this question because... Because um, if you are trying to decide and you're trying to save every buck you can because you're a college student, well, I plus understand Plus, CSAs that. are cheap. I mean, you can get it in bulk. You can get all your produce. Uh, you know, it's going to last you like a couple weeks. That's like super cheap. It, it, it's all in just the planning of it. Your so. CSA, what? A CSA is like um, a local farm that you oh. become you a member to deliver of. Them the uh, they deliver it to you. It's really not 
expensive at all. Uh, and then if you get the rest, if you do something like a butcher box or something where it's like, you know, you can sort of plan it out. It just takes more planning, but you can really keep the, the cost way low you these know, days. You know what, though? Let's think about this for a second. You got a college student saying, I need to save money. Um, I want to know if it's whatever. Here's a deal, okay? You're probably buying alcohol or you're probably eating out. It's not expensive at all to buy rice, which is cheap. Yeah, and everything you can get, in bulk, dude. You could buy organic chicken breasts and chicken thighs, which are cheap. You could buy you you get vegetables. You can buy vegetables pretty damn cheap if you get frozen organic vegetables. And by the way, frozen That's is not true. bad. Yeah, frozen's fine. It's actually good. In fact, I prefer frozen because I throw away uh, less of them than when I buy fresh because then they go bad. Uh -huh. So you can buy a bag of frozen broccoli or frozen asparagus or frozen spinach, which is cheap as shit. Yeah, chicken organic in bulk. Uh, rice, there's your starches and your carbs. Potatoes, <laughs> potatoes are the cheapest food on earth. There's yeah. your, there's your starch right there. Yeah. So when people say I'm trying to save money, it's like okay, if I look at what you're spending, you're probably eating out. You're probably buying a burrito or a sandwich or whatever. Mm -hmm. The reality is you'll save more money if you go to the store, buy those things in bulk, and prepare. The only your investments really like the freezer. You know, mm -hmm. like you got to make sure you got a really good freezer. You could stock up with it. And then, you know, like anything to like to grill it with, like the George Foreman grill or yep. something. Like, you know, if you have that, you're pretty, pretty sad. I actually lived on that when I was in college. I mean, the George Foreman saved me. Yeah. I mean, even steak, you can get sometimes bulk uh, prices on steak. But well, like Justin said, butcher box is super reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you look at what you're, what you're paying for grass fed, if you were to buy that in the grocery store, it would cost you more money. Yeah. yeah. So buying, you know, buying, and that's where I get my chicken too from them. Mm -hmm. So I get my chicken thighs and my beef all come from them. Mm hmm. And and I go through that, and so that's it's not that much more money at all, and no. it's getting fucking shipped to your house. But so um, be, be, be honest, when you look at people who are like, oh, it's too expensive, and you look at the money they spend on food. Yeah, you have Starbucks every day though that costs you fucking three yeah. fifty, right? Yeah. Make a, a list and yeah, compare and contrast, dude, because you're gonna be real surprised. How, literally, what I'm yeah. saying right now, literally, rice, potatoes, frozen vegetables, chicken breast, chicken thighs, how, tuna fish in a can. How much money could you save if you did that? Yeah. I mean, incredible. Next question is from One Fit GMA. How do you know if you're suffering from upper cross syndrome? You, okay, so you the, are. <laughs> so this is this is a good. No, I like the way this is. Are this you is, falling to the ground? I, I like the way this is written because uh, suffering is the is the operative word here. Right. Now, upper cross syndrome looks like rolled forward shoulders. You know, head that kind of juts. It's forward. a very visible posture. Yeah, that that's what upper cross syndrome looks like. Suffering from upper cross syndrome, though, is a little bit different because mm. there's posture deviations and differences in, in individuals. Like what, what is good posture for one person right. might be not good for another person. You know, all that depends on is can you move? Are you mobile? Do you have pain? Like can you reach straight up above your head? Can you squeeze your shoulder blades back? Can you, when you do movements and exercises, do, does your neck hurt? Are you yeah, tight? Yeah, you're always straining your are you, neck. Yeah, if you don't have any pain, you feel good, you're super mobile, and you can do lots of different things, and you're not weak or whatever. Well, that's the, the key term that you just said right, right. there is you're, you're, you're mobile, and you may not be suffering to your point where you have neck pain, back pain, or issues like that, but, and, and this is why we created MAPS Prime. In MAPS Prime, the zone one test that you take at home will point this out for you. And to address the, the point that you're making right now, Sal, which is you kind of just went right over it, but I think is important, is do you have the proper mobility and range of motion that you should have in your shoulders, which is normally where if you have upper cross syndrome and you don't have pain going on and it's not you're not quote unquote suffering from it, you, you may be fine from that aspect, but have horrific shoulder mobility. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the most common, common well, area. Well, in other words, you'll eventually suffer. Right. Yeah, at some right. point so you'll it, start to suffer. Right. You're it. Not, it's, it may not be causing issues now, but it's, it, it inevitably will eventually cause issues. And the reason why I said right away that you have it, everybody has, almost, almost everybody has upper cross syndrome to, to an extent. And that's just because we do everything in front of us. Yeah. You don't do anything, you, you don't do anything behind you. We, we drive, we write, we do things, we, we eat, we do everything in this forward position. 
And I've still yet to meet somebody who sits at a dinner table or sits in their car and goes, oh, chest up, shoulders back, oh, head back. Everybody has to do yeah. something to plan to, you know, uh, address it, to, to counter the effects of upper cross syndrome because uh, it is so part of our everyday experience and reaching for things, like you said, mm -hmm. and doing all these everyday activities. Like you have to, to, to create, uh, you know, like a plan for exercising in order to be able to support your body in better posture. And everybody should think in that direction. Yeah, well, a lot of people too, they have uh, chronic like pain, minor chronic pain that they've had for so long. They don't even know. Yeah, so it's like, you know, do you have do you suffer from, you know, upper cross syndrome? Like, no, I feel fine. I'm like, okay. How does your neck ever get tight? Oh yeah, yeah. By the end of the day, my neck gets yeah, really yeah, tight. Headaches. <laughs> do you get headaches, like tension headaches? I'm like, yeah, those kind of bother yeah, me. Yeah, just take a yeah, an excedrin. I'm yeah. fine. How do you feel when you throw a frisbee around or a baseball? Oh, my shoulder starts to hurt. It gets yeah, kind of it sore. Gets like but a kink and yeah, so yeah. so you gotta so ask and, I, and this by the way, this is so common. Like as a trainer, when I would do a you know assessment. And I get, I would always ask, like, do you have any areas of pain or immobility? And almost always, they would say, no, no, I have no pain. I feel <laughs> then good. Then you take them through all the range. I, of then I would like, take them through. Like, I would you say, can't even get halfway. I, then I would go uh, piece by piece. I'm like, okay, no pain. I'm like, so shoulders. Do your shoulders ever bother you? Do you ever have any pain? <laughs> oh yeah, sometimes. <laughs> What about your neck? Well, sometimes. How about your knees? Well, my knee, my left knee, you know, that one gets kind of. <laughs> Wait a second. I thought you when were it falling. rains, this one really, you know. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, if you have really bad upper cross syndrome, you probably have tight, uh, tight neck. Your neck probably gets real tight, a lot of tension in your upper, uh, your upper trap, you know, kind of neck area. You might get tension headaches. Um, and you may notice uh, shoulder problems when you try to play like conventional sports, like, you know, throwing a baseball or, or throwing a frisbee or. You know, maybe you reached up, you know, to grab something and then your shoulder kind of felt a little tweak. Those are common uh, problems or, or just tightness in the upper back. Those are common problems. It, it, here's from upper cross real, syndrome. real easy without you having to go get maps prime and do it like to put your back against a wall and see if you can put your hands all the way up above your head touching the wall. Very few people, but you're do keep, that. while keeping your butt against the wall. Yeah, too. keep your butt and back pressed against the wall. Lift your arms above your right, head, back straight up. Back of your head. Yeah, yeah. Can you put the whole back of your arm and back yeah. of your hand? Yeah, and up just against? so you know, before you do it and fail at it, most people should be able to do that. It's yeah. just, I mean, we've we're all so rounded forward that we we've lost that ability to do and that. How and good that feels when you when you can achieve. Oh yeah. That. Oh man, it, it's like. It, and that's what everybody always expresses once they go through that is just like this this new feeling. Your body almost rewards you when it's stacked properly and you're in good posture. Totally. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our resources and guides. They're all totally free. We have all kinds of stuff there from burning body fat, building muscle, targeted body part uh, guides. So like ones for legs and arms and your midsection. Again, it's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.